Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back to your daily crypto news and analysis. And today we're going to be talking about Ripple and XRP, so let's just dive in. And let's start off with this tweet here from Zero Hedge. And we do see if the Fed does not contain the regional bank collapse, there will be another Great Depression. Small and medium banks account for 50% of U.S. commercial and industrial lending, 60% of res uh, residential real estate lending, 80% of commercial real estate lending, and 45% of consumer lending. And here we have the chart. You can also see the failed so far um, in red. I think that this is just the beginning. Um, I actually think that right now as we look at banks, um, I think that the Fed is definitely at a tight spot and what they do next could ultimately cause 100 banks, at least, at least 100 banks collapse. Why do I say that? Well, we recently reported on 186 banks that have the same issue that SVB does, which is the fact that, guess what? They're over leveraging customer funds and their reserves can't back it if there is a withdrawal on the assets meaning more bank runs, but also, right, we know that the Fed is adamant that we will see higher rates than central bank policymakers had expected. Here's the video, right? Listen closely to this video, um, and I want you guys to, re uh, to understand that anything that the Fed does next, whether he pauses or even, you know, hikes rates, Either scenario is going to cause damage to the markets. Now, crypto could benefit greatly from pauses. But if we do see a rate hike increase, we could see a significant drawback in the market. But listen closely to what he's saying here, as he's essentially telling us, hey, interest rates are going to likely be higher than central bank policymakers had expected. We will stay course until the job is done. Although inflation has been moderating in recent months, the process of getting inflation back down to 2% has a long way to go <clears throat> and is likely to be bumpy. As I mentioned, the latest economic data have come in stronger than expected, which suggests that the ultimate level of interest rates is likely to be, to be higher than previously anticipated. If a totality of the data were to indicate <clears throat> that faster tightening is warranted, we'd be prepared to increase the pace of rate hikes. Restoring price stability will likely require that we maintain a restrictive stance of monetary policy for some time. <clears throat> our overarching focus is using our tools to bring inflation back down to our 2% goal and to keep longer-term inflation expectations well anchored. Restoring price stability is essential to set the stage for achieving maximum employment and stable prices over the longer run. The historical record cautions strongly against prematurely loosening policy. We will stay the course until the job is done. To conclude, we understand that our actions affect communities, families, and businesses across the country. Everything we do is in service to our public mission. At the Federal Reserve, we will do everything we can to achieve our maximum employment and price stability goals. Now. I also want to include what we recently just seen Fed say, and also Janet Yellen. They said that the U.S. bank's capital and liquidity is strong. Now, this comes days after we did see Joe Biden also say, everything is fine. And they panicked. They panicked to have the general public remain safe, relaxed, don't worry. Your bank accounts are fine. The FDIC is covering it, even though we do know that the FDIC reserves don't even cover half of what we see in terms of depositors, right? I think that the, with the last time that we looked at the reserves, it was like $180 billion or something like that. Think about how many bank accounts have less than $250,000 in them in the U.S. There's absolutely no way that U.S. banks' capital and liquidity is strong. And I do believe that we are going to see many more banks get completely wiped out. And we are going to see this be tested on Tuesday and Wednesday with the FOMC meetings. I want you all to prepare now. I, I mentioned this in my last video as well. I think that a global liquidity crisis is brewing. Liquidity is the focus point. I've mentioned this many times. I've talked about a global liquidity crisis breaking out. And uh, now we are starting to see it. What do you see over here from Bloomberg? Credit Suisse, credit, uh, crisis latest. 
Here we have European banking stocks fall at open. HSBC stand chart slump in Asia. Holders of risky bonds face $17 billion wipeout. Fed global central banks move to boost dollar funding. Thousands of jobs at risk. And uh, yeah, if you guys did miss it, we just seen a massive move. What is that? Well, several major banks announced coordinated action to increase U.S. dollar liquidity provision in global market through swap lines. U.S. Fed, Bank of Canada, England, Japan, Swiss National Bank, and European Central Bank. Here we have the full-on um, update. We do see global central bank liquidity provisions ready for some fun. Here we have the Fed and the central banks of the United uh, Kingdom, Canada, Japan, and the European Central Bank, and Switzerland announced a coordinated action to improve liquidity provision through the standing, uh, through the standing U.S. dollar uh, liquidity swap lines. Global central banks to enhance liquidity via USD swap line. We're here. Swap lines between these central banks are a collection of available sending facilities that serve as an important liquidity backstop in global funding markets. U.S. Federal Reserve daily operations will begin on Monday and will last at least until the end of April. Uh, to improve the effectiveness of swap lines in providing U.S. dollar funding, the central banks currently offering U.S. dollar operations have agreed to increase the frequency of seven-day maturity operations from weekly to daily. And over here, last but not least, the goal of the coordinated central bank actions is to increase the availability of the U.S. dollar liquidity. Uh, the swap lines help to alleviate pressures on the availability of credit to households and businesses. So we have confirmation that what we recently just seen from the Fed and Janet Yellen is not true. Liquidity is not strong. Capital is not strong. Banks are at risk. I do believe that this is only the beginning. I honestly think that this week we are going to see a lot more banks closing their doors, collapsing, and ultimately begging for bailouts. This over here, U.S. banks borrowed over $150 billion from the Fed's discount window last week, blowing past the previous record during the 2008 financial crisis, $112 billion. Remember what I said, we will see a 2008-like scenario on a much larger scale. We are at risk. As retail investors and just as retail individuals, we have money parked in banks. We have money tied to banks. And now we are seeing problems rise again, just like 2008. There's problems. The gaps are showing. Cracks are basically here. We are seeing them. And capital, liquidity in the banking sector is drying up. I'm telling you right now, banks are not safe. Banks are not your friend. They utilize our cash to make money. Guess what? Most of them are over leveraged. And now we are seeing the problems arise on why the banks leveraging our funds. It's not a good idea. And also, we do see over here, in Gold Telegraph, watching bankers beg for bailouts and government support again shows only wolves to live inside the den of banking. Greed will eventually destroy as cycles repeat and people forget. I'm telling you right now, we are about to see an event much larger than anyone can anticipate. And it's all going to be centered on one thing, liquidity. Going back to January 2nd, we did see here, there is more than $80 trillion in hidden debts held by shadow banks and non-U.S. banks. There are $650 billion in bonds and loans in distressed territory. We have unregulated stablecoins worth tens of billions of dollars. 2023, I'm sure we will hear the word liquidity often. I want you guys to understand, right now, liquidity is the focus point. Now, if only we had something that offers on-demand liquidity that could save these markets. Remember what I've said about Ripple with XRP. They could free up Nostra Vostro accounts. $27 trillion was the last amount that we know were in those accounts. That is $27 trillion injected into the market immediately. It could solve a lot of these problems right now. But what's stopping it? Is it regulators? What's going on? Well, let's look at a few things. I just included this video 
in my video from the other day talking about Ripple. Listen closely to this two minute long segment real quick, and then I want to go in depth on a few things. In your life that sucks and I can make it better. That's a much easier case. And so Ripple said, we're going to, but, but, but if you're going to go after institutional adoption, because that's what it's going to take, it's going to take institutional adoption, it can't be three people in a garage. Like it has to be an organized operation. So he said, what Ripple, the company, is going to do is we're going to focus on building high quality technologies that will allow institutional adoption. And so we look, what are the blockers? Why can't banks use a cryptocurrency to settle? And the answer is their messaging systems are antiquated. They don't even know like where the money has to go when they make a payment. The messaging isn't even closed loop. It's back in the 70s if you're lucky. Uh, and so we So messaging, right? We focus on messaging. ISO 20022. So everyone blows this out of proportion. A lot of people think that ISO 20022 you know, means a lot for you know specific tokens. It really doesn't necessarily. One thing that I would love to know with ISO 20022 is that it's going to change the way that data and transactions um, are looked at. Um, everything around this is going to change. But what does this do for crypto? What does this do for fintech companies? Well, for crypto, we do look at the companies that are ISO 20022 compliant because that means that these specific technologies could be utilized and leveraged. Going over here to JP Morgan, we do see ISO 2022 migration delivering faster payments automation. They have this quick little breakdown here, fast facts. The last one is what I focus on. Requires planning ahead, multi-year project for financial institutions to implement value-added services. Value-added services to enhance experience. This is the big one. Because with ISO 2022, it improves data, it improves the overall um, information that we can see. And with this, it does also open the system. What we've seen um, David Schwartz say is a closed loop system is basically what we are working on right now. But if we take a step forward and upgrade the messaging, ISO 2022 for example, then we will see an open system where we could see value added services that could ultimately enhance and change the entire way value is moved, value is settled, transacted, etc. I do believe that ISO 2022 opens a significant door for crypto adoption that, you know, we'll say is tied to companies like Ripple because RippleNet is ISO 2022 compliant, meaning it can be leveraged with this upgrade in messaging. That's why I think ISO 2022 is significant. I don't think that it means that XRP is going to pump to, you know, all time highs or anything like that through ISO 2022. No, but I do believe that it opens the door for XRP to be leveraged through RippleNet which is significant. When you look at 80% of global high value payments by volume being processed through ISO 2022, it's a big deal. But now I also want to take you to the last tweet in this video. And that got posted by Assets Daily. What do you see? If banks collapsed, ISO 2022 is live. Ripple provides lends liquidity to global liquidity crisis and remaining XRP is entirely accessed. Where would XRP be priced with none available? Now I want to ask you real quick. Do you believe, with how smart David Schwartz is and Brad Garlinghouse, do you believe that they knew that a 2008-like scenario was brewing? So what they did was create something that could help solve this at the last resort. In my opinion, Ripple with XRP, combining the power of RippleNet with XRP through on-demand liquidity, I believe that they could be the overall solution but it's going to be the last resort because i think that bankers the elites i think that they're very stubborn i i don't think that they want to utilize this technology because they don't want to give up any power but ripple could be a lender of last resort this is miguel aviez from ripple listen closely to what he's saying here in my mind's eye there's a possibility where you know we end up more of a lending kind of, uh, you know, a more of a lending lender of last resort capacity, maybe. So a lender of last resort. Now, obviously, yes, it doesn't mean that it's guaranteed to happen or anything like that. But I do strongly believe that Ripple with XRP could be the solu solution to the main problem here. Because liquidity is the focus. Liquidity is the problem. And I don't care what these 
know, higher ups are saying. I don't believe Fed Chair Jerome Powell and Janet Yellen. I don't believe these two. I don't believe that liquidity and capital is strong around the banks. What do you guys think? With all of the events that we just recently seen, and with how much liquidity is being injected into the system, and how many banks are coming out you know, to support the dollar liquidity, let me ask you, does it feel like the US dollar and the banks in the US are safe? Does it seem like liquidity is strong? I'd love to hear your thoughts. So with that being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe, and notifications on because more free content. You guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord down in the description below. Uh, so I hope that you all have a beautiful day or a beautiful night. Wherever you guys are in this beautiful world, it's been Nick. Peace out, guys.